Welcome to part two of printing your wacky wobbly wheels. To date, I've received over 50 entries to try, which is insane. So these are just a couple of the interesting designs I've printed so far. And in this video, I'll walk you through the slicer tips and tricks I use to create them on a wide range of 3D printers. Let's get started. First up are these two very different designs printed on the elusive, much hyped Elegoo Neptune 2. This printer is basically an Ender 3 clone, but it's actually pretty decent and the price is ridiculously low. But that doesn't seem to matter because no one can actually buy it. Elegoo just randomly sent this out to me and I didn't even agree to a review, so sorry about that, I'm not gonna do one, but Joel and Tom do have great videos covering it over on their channels, linked below. But my TLDR review for the Neptune 2 is that it's on par with, if not slightly better, than the original Ender 3 for a better price, but you'll probably end up going to buy an Ender 3 anyway because you can't buy this. It seems to me that Neptune 2 was more of a marketing tactic than a genuine attempt to dethrone Creality. The wheels themselves are fairly straightforward to print. I use my patented Ender 3 stupid dumb fast preset as a starting point with Alastair's starfish wheels being printed at 0.2 millimeter layer heights and Scott's scoop wheels being printed at 0.3 millimeters due to the lack of any shallow surfaces. By the way, if you're wondering how coarse you can go with your printer in terms of layer heights, a good rule of thumb in my experience is about 80% of the nozzle size. You can get away with more coarse layer heights, but I find overhangs will start to break apart as you push it further. So for huge prints, a 0.8 millimeter nozzle with 0.6 millimeter layers can really speed things up if your print can handle the thicker extrusion lines, which by the way is another consideration for Scott's scoop wheel. These thin webs in the center are just thick enough that if I only use two outside perimeters, the slicer would put small bits of infill in. Now these small bits of infill don't actually serve any real purpose and they'd cause the printer to jump around to different points each layer to fill them in. So I simply increase perimeters to three, which turns these areas into solid filled lines instead. They are pretty great and they feel super chunky and solid with the sand scoop design. I reckon they'll do really well, but I think the starfish wheels are definitely a lot more unusual and I'm keen to try them out. Next up are these flexi wheels by Ike Tommy on Thingiverse and you just have to love their description. Don't worry man. I got you. While they don't have any consideration for the contact surface area at all, they're a great excuse to test flexibles on my heavily modified Tronxy D01 with the E3D Hemera hot end. My previous flexible prints that I showed were stringing central, and so as a result, some of you suggested this awesome Prusa Slicer Ninja Flex profile, which I do have to say works freaking awesome in Polymaker's TPU95 high flow. I simply modified it to suit the D01, and each wheel is printed on its own, and straight off the printer, they look fantastic. Even the overhangs are printed decently, and the wheels do have this interesting flexibility to them. I have no idea how well they perform, and I think they'll probably like expand as they, the car accelerates, but I don't know, well, we're gonna have to find out. Last up is this incredible design by Theodore, the Sand Devil Wheels. They're super unusual, but I can see the thought process. I just have no idea how they're going to go. I initially tried printing them on this thing, the Mingda Rock 3 Pro. It just randomly turned up one day and looks very similar in design to the Sidewinder X1, so I thought I'd give it a go. But honestly, I'm not impressed. Uh, the accelerations from factory are ridiculously high and the interface is really, really limited. But the nail in the coffin was that its tendency to jam up in Z and just ruin the prints. I've got this pile of failures to show for it, and that's about it. It's possibly fixable, but no, I'm not gonna reward a printer just showing up out of the blue without an agreement. So I did get two usable wheels offered, but instead just printed the remaining ones on the Neptune 2. Although it doesn't seem to affect functionality at all, I thought this design would be a good excuse to use seam painting in Prusa Slicer to dictate where each perimeter should start and finish. And by painting it within the wheel itself, it means the outer surface is free from any blemishes. And it really does look super futuristic and clean, but if you look at it at just the right angle, you can find those seams hidden along that line inside the wheel. Pretty neat. As I mentioned, you guys have sent in a ton of designs. It really is incredible. And these are the ones I've printed so far, but I think it's about time I start testing them. 
So don't be discouraged if I haven't featured yours here. I just chose some random ones to show off some slicer tips and tricks that I use to create them. I'll be pitting designs against each other in lots of four over the coming months in a wide variety of scenarios. So if you don't wanna miss that, be sure to subscribe to Maker's Muse, where it's my aim to empower your creativity through technology. And with that, I look forward to seeing you very shortly. Catch you later guys, bye.